Hi everybody, it's Audra Lacatro with Girl Scouts. Back for another STEM series, um, Facebook Live STEM series. Hope you guys are all having a good week. Um, happy to have you join us and hopefully this is a um, bright spot in your week. Get to do a little something fun in the kitchen, learn a little bit of science. Um, I am a couple minutes early, so I am going to just hang out with you and chat and wait and see um, who we get on today. If you are already on, please type your name um, in the chat box just so I can say hi and see who is joining me today. See if we get um, a couple more people on before I get started. Oh, Jacqueline. Hi, Jacqueline. Thanks for watching. So I am Lily and Lou. Hey guys, and Sarah. Hi. So I don't know if you guys know, but I'm um, in the kitchen in the basement of the Decatur office. So I have to um, come here so that it's quiet because I have a toddler at home. So um i get to make use of our beautiful kitchen down here so it's kind of fun to to get out um and get a little peace and quiet and hang out with you guys for a minute hi hannah thanks for joining hannah did you um did you join us at all last week for my stem session or Sarah's cooking session. I just wondered if you've been on before, if it's this is your first time. Right at three o'clock now, so hopefully get a couple more people saying hi before we get started. Um, but if you are on, you can go ahead and make sure you have all your materials. So I'm going to point the camera down a little bit. Um, so you can see all of the materials that you need, and then we'll get started. All right, so hopefully you can see that. If you can't see or you can't hear or you have a question, um, please ask at any time, and I'll do my best to fix it. Um, but for today, we need paper towel. We need vinegar specifically four tablespoons of vinegar we need whole milk or vitamin d milk specifically one cup of that um, from the research that i did this this um, experiment works best with whole milk so if you don't have that give it a try with whatever you have at home no worries that's a part of science just to see what happens um, but I was able to get whole milk, um, so hopefully um, it will work well for you at home. All right, our measuring tools we have, um, we have one cup for the milk. We have a tablespoon to measure out the vinegar. And um, I said that you needed one bowl, but you actually need two bowls or any two kind of containers. 
um, we'll need one to put the milk in to heat it up in the microwave, and we'll need one to strain it and stir. So you can use measuring cups, bowls, um, whatever you have, okay? We also have a strainer, a spoon for stirring, a cookie cutter, and I decided to go with a little chick um, for springtime. It's hard to see that with the background. Um, I did this experiment on Friday to try and get ready for you guys and realized that smaller is better. So if you have a small cookie cutter, um, I prefer that over anything big because the amount that we use just doesn't produce a whole lot. So if you only have a big one, then you, you're going to need to up your milk and your vinegar ingredients, okay? But for um, what I'm going to show you, I'm going to use a little chick with one cup of milk and four tablespoons of vinegar. And then I have an optional food coloring. I happen to have gel food coloring at home. You can also use liquid. It's probably easier than the gel, but this is what I had. And that's what we're going with. All right, so those are all the things that we need today. And I am not able to see how many people are logged in for some reason. Um, it looks different than last week. So I don't know who's all joining me unless you say hi. So if you haven't said hi yet, please do so that I can say hi back. And um, like I said, ask questions at any time. And we will go ahead and get started. So has anyone ever um, made cheese or yogurt at home? Um, if you have, then you may be a pro at this experiment. Um, type in the comments once again and let me know um, if you've done anything like this before, if you've made homemade cheese or yogurt, and maybe you can help us out. Um, so, does anyone know what you get from mixing milk and vinegar? Just two ingredients today. It's called buttermilk. And if you're wanting to make something like waffles at home and you don't have buttermilk, uh, all you have to do is mix together milk and vinegar, and that would be your substitute. Okay, so um, this is just kind of, I mean, cooking is science, right? So that's just another tidbit for you on vinegar. Um, and so vinegar is classified as an acid. Does anyone know another type of acid that you can mix with milk? That also becomes buttermilk. Oh, I found some more comments. If you know what else um, makes buttermilk besides milk and vinegar, type it in. So this is Hannah's first time. Awesome, Hannah. Thanks for joining. And then I have Cheryl and Chelsea. Hey, guys. I wonder where you are in Southern Illinois. I went to school at SIU, so we love it down there. And then we have Caitlin all the way from Houston. Awesome. Thanks for joining, Caitlin. All right, so the other acid besides vinegar that you can mix with milk to make buttermilk is lemon juice. So that's something else you can give a try next time you're making waffles, okay? All right, let's get started. So we, I'm going to tilt the camera down again so you can see, um, so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so grab your milk and your one cup measuring cup. Fill that to the top. Now the next step is using the microwave. So if you are not um, with an adult, we need to make sure that we're being safe in the kitchen, right? So grab the adult at your house and make sure it's okay that you use the microwave because we're going to heat this milk up. So I'm going to pour the milk into the cup or bowl that I'm going to use in the microwave. Okay, 
Okay, and we're going to microwave it for 90 seconds, which also equals, sorry, I'm trying to look at my comments, which also equals a minute and a half. So however you want to put that into the microwave, go ahead and do that now. Hi, Jaslyn. Thanks for joining. All right, let's put our milk in the microwave. We had just warmed up our one cup of milk for 90 seconds, and we had just put in the four tablespoons of vinegar, and we were going to stir it for a whole minute. So, hopefully, you can switch back to this video uh, since we got kicked off and uh, join me now where we're at. So, we are stirring our milk and vinegar mixture. And it's definitely been longer than a minute since I got kicked off, so hopefully yours is getting clumpy. Mine doesn't seem to be getting too clumpy right now. All right, so we are going to then get our second bowl or container. We're going to put the strainer over it. And we're going to strain our mixture and hopefully catch some of those clumps that are coming from our mixture, okay? And then we are going to um, press down on those clumps. Hopefully you can see that okay. Press down on those clumps with your spoon to get all the moisture out because what we want to be left with is this clumpy mixture that's coming through, okay? Hopefully yours clumped a little bit more than mine. Mine clumped more than this when I tried it on Friday, so I'm not sure what the difference is. But that is a part of science. Sometimes things work out like you think they will, and sometimes they don't. All right, so hopefully you have your mixture in your strainer. And the next step is to grab a paper towel and your cookie cutter. Because we are going to put the mixture inside the cookie cutter and make our shape. So scoop it on out of there and tap it in. Okay. And make your shape. You may have to use your spoon or the end of the spoon to kind of get it into the little grooves depending on what kind of cookie cutter you made or you chose. All right, I have a comment from Cheryl that says, do you have to use a certain type of milk? Um, definitely go ahead and try skim if that's all you have. Give it a try. The research that I did said that whole milk works the best. So that's the one I got. Um, but you never know. So give it a try and let us know if it works. And this is the time that you also want to add your food coloring. So you have your mixture inside your cookie cutter. You can add your food coloring on top, whatever kind you have. This is optional. This is just to make it pretty. And give that a stir. And I'll show you what mine turned out to be. Mine turned out to look like this. Let's see if you can see that. It's a little yellow chick. And this has been sitting out for three days now. Three days and nights. And um, it's pretty hard. I wouldn't say it's as hard as plastic yet. 
um, but it's pretty hard. So um, definitely make sure you get all the moisture out of your mixture. That's an important part that I found into making it really hard. So maybe I didn't quite press enough liquid out of it. But that's what mine turned out to be. Um, and I wanted to give you a little bit of info on what that chemical reaction really was. So what do you think the reaction was actually happening just now? So acidifying milk is what we did, essentially lowering its pH, causes the milk proteins like casein to unwind and unfold in a process known as protein denaturing. The unfolded proteins are then free to interact with each other and clump together in a way that they could not do when they were properly folded. The milk takes on a curdled appearance, curdled, you know, like cottage cheese, from the lumps of proteins that are binding one another. And I will include that little blurb in the comments so you can go back and, and research any of those um, big words that you may not know. And I will also share a link to a YouTube video that also explains um, how to make plastic from milk and vinegar and has a couple variances. So you can always try this again and see what works and what doesn't work. And, um, and keep commenting so we can all learn from each other. So another interesting fact is that they actually used to use this combination of milk and vinegar to make things like buttons a long time ago. So it would really get that hard, um, hard enough to make a button. So I thought that was cool when I was researching. Uh, comment, what else do you think we could make? What else is hard like a button or something that you can make with this mixture because um, really you can put it into any shape that you have. So if you, um, this is kind of like a decoration, you know, for springtime, but what's something else that you can make that might be functional and useful around your house? Uh, feel free if you joined me last week or if you're going back to watch that video from last week, um, post your pictures in the comments of your green pennies because I just want to see how green did they get. Mine got pretty green. Um, I didn't bring them with me today, but I'm curious to see how your how green yours got. And then also with this project as well, show me what shape you made. Did you make a heart? Did you make a star? Um, just um, share with everyone so we can see what kind of fun you guys had, okay? We are so happy uh, to have you joining us and hopefully um, this is a little bright spot in your day or your week joining uh, Girl Scouts on Facebook Live. We're happy to have you every week and we hope that you are staying safe and enjoying your time at, all, at home. We definitely uh, miss all of you, um, seeing you at school and trip meetings, et cetera. Um, we definitely miss all of you and can't wait to see you again. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and thank you so much for joining. Bye.